Hello everybody and welcome to the wonderful world of DMX programming for LED park hands. I'm new at this. I'm not very good at this and I was actually really dreading making this video but there are a lot of requests for me to do it so here it is for you because you asked for it. Uh, the first thing I want you to do though before you even watch my video is go look at Groovin DJ's two videos on DMX controllers and park hands. This guy taught me pretty much everything that I know which is very little but uh, that's just because of uh, what I can comprehend in one session at a time. Great videos, Groovin DJ is a great guy, look at him and subscribe to him, he's done some nice work. So anyway, yeah, why DMX park hands? Well, they consume very little power, they're very bright, you can do cool tricks with them and they're typically pretty small compared to a normal park hand. Disadvantages? The controller's huge. It's taken up a lot of rack space in my racks to the point where I've had to buy new racks to accommodate my gear. I went from a one space little uh, Elation Co-Pilot 2 to a three space giant DMX controller that I'll never use to its full capacity. But I've got it and I'm going to deal with it. So here we go. Without further ado, let's jump into this. And again, just a disclaimer, I'm brand new at this. If I've made some mistakes, I apologize. Please you know, correct me down here in the comments. And in the meantime, watch Groove and DJ and uh, enjoy what we've got here. This is a two part video. It's long. Okay, here is the light in question. It is called a, let's see, an LED PAR 38 Color Splash Junior. Now the reason they call it a PAR 83 is because there's 83 little LED lights in here, I believe. It's actually the same size as a pin spot or what we call a PAR 36 light. On the back of this light you're going to notice a few things. Uh, the first thing you may notice are these two cables sticking out here. Well what are they? On this particular light, if you own them in multiples, which you probably should, I have four of them, what you can do is, uh, you, with special cables that come with the lights, you can daisy chain the ACs together, the power together. So ultimately what you end up doing is only plugging one power plug into the wall to power all four lights, which is nice. You don't have to juggle with a bunch of plugs. Also we have these XLR three pin style inlets and outlets. Those are for your DMX cables or good quality XLR cables to daisy chain all of these lights together. You're also going to have an XLR or a DMX cable going from your first light into your DMX controller. The XLR style cables or DMX cables are what sends the signals to each light. Now how do you know what lights what? Now what they do is on a DMX controller, they refer to each light as a fixture, okay? Now, every light's a little different, but on these particular lights, this is how you have to do it. Each fixture occupies like 15 channels. Okay, light number one, you're gonna have to set these dip switches to a value of one that's gonna occupy channel one through 15. Light number two, is going to have a DMX channel value of um, 16, which is going to occupy channels 16 through 31. Light number 3 is going to need a DMX value of 32, which is going to occupy 32 through 47. And the last light I have, which is 48, is going to occupy 48 plus 15. Now it sounds goofy because it is goofy, um, but that's how it works. And uh, you're going to have to mathematically figure out how to set these 10 dip switches to call them whatever you want to call them. You know, 1, 16, 32, 48, and so on. There's a mathematical equation for this, but I got a cheat for you. And I'm going to show you the cheat. And then I'm going to show you what I had to do to actually uh, make these lights work. It was a little different than what I was told in the cheat. So check this out. This is a great tool. Now what we have here is a website. It's by uh, Sabre Technology, S-A-B-R-E Technology, uh, www.sabretechnology.co.uk slash calc.asp question mark DMX equals whatever. I'm going to scroll the web address for you so you could just have a quick look at it. I'm also going to put it in the description of this video. 
basically all you have to do is type in what DMX channel value you're trying to achieve with dip switches. Let's say that we want channel um, 48. We type in 48. We hit enter. And there it goes. It shows you that dip switch number 5 and 6 need to be set on a 10 dip switch style DMX light. Uh, and you could do the same thing with as many channels as you're looking for. Let's say that you are looking for DMX channel number 16. We type in 16. We hit enter. It'll show you that number 5 needs to be switched. And on and on and on. Now on my lights I had to do things a little differently. For some reason, and I don't understand why, but regardless of whatever it said that my value should be, I also had to have switch number 1 and number 10 switch to the on position. It's the only way I could get my DMX uh, to work properly. And I don't know why, but I did. So if you've got these Chevet lights and you're getting frustrated, try switching number 1 and number 10 as well as whatever they recommend you switch for the channel and chances are things are going to work for you then. I'm going to give you a quick nickel tour of this particular DMX controller. Now as Groove and DJ has said, they're all pretty similar. They all speak the same language, they all just look a little different, but this probably looks like what you may have in front of you or may have seen at the gear shop. Our first set of buttons are the fixture buttons. Fixtures 1 through 12 are represented here. Uh, let's just turn on fixture 1 for fun. When you turn it on, this green light illuminates. And now we can control fixture 1, which is this light right here. This is as, uh, on the this particular light. This acts as the fader slash strobe fader. This one is uh, red. This one is green, and this one is blue. So if we crank this all the way up and crank this up, look, we got a red light. Pretty cool. We crank this one up, we got a green light. We crank this one up, we got a blue light. And we can do any color combination of those we wish, or we can bring this up. Uh, speed fader down or this this uh, dimmer down we can actually strobe this light if we want to or we can make it kind of dim or we can make it bright whatever we want to do we have a bunch of buttons up here that say scenes now in the next part of this video we will be working with the scenes a little bit this is part one we're gonna do a part two just cuz it's a long video uh, then here we have um, a speed button shows you how fast these lights are going to chase. Here we have a fade time button. This uh, is kind of nice. You'll see we'll fade lights in a little bit. It'll actually uh, let you, you know, the lights kind of fade into each other opposed to really harsh changes. Then we have a series of buttons over here. We have bank buttons. And right next to the bank buttons we have our digital display. Now right now this digital display says um, 101. The first digit here is your scene, and the second set of digits here is your bank. The scene is a picture. The bank is where you store it. You can store up to, I think, 30 different banks of, uh, of scenes, and you can do 8 through uh, 16 on those. We're only going to work with 8 today. Here we have some more buttons that we're going to worry about today. Program. MIDI slash record, auto slash delete, and blackout. That's what we're going to be working with. Let's get started. Okay, for our purposes today, we're only going to be working with two fixtures. Fixture 1 and fixture 2. But uh, it's the same general principle regardless of how many fixtures you're working with. Now let's just start from the beginning. I'm going to turn this controller on. The switch is in the back. Boom. The controller is now on. Now there's a button right here that says blackout. The blackout button does exactly that, blacks out all your lights. And it's always on by the default whenever you turn your controller on. So the first thing you might want to do is turn your blackout button off. Now a bunch of lights came on. Why? Well who knows why, they just did. So what we need to do is turn them off. What we need to do is press fixtures 1 and 2, because those are the two lights we're working with bring the faders all the way up and all the way down and it turns those fixtures off for you. Next step. 